All right, what is up, YouTube boxing family? Uh, it is K Rod here. I am back with another good video for y'all today. Um, I wanted to talk about um Miss Franchon Cruz versus Aline Cedar Roos and why that is one of the biggest fights in women's boxing that no one's not talking about. Um, so yeah, let's get right to it. Uh, I figured that I talk about it, you know, I have like a little conversation about female boxing and yeah, let's get right to it. So, um, I believe this is the very first ever four belt era female unification undisputed showdown between Franchon, Franchon, Franchon Cruz Desern. Uh, that will be facing against uh, Sweden's own um, Aline Cedarus, in which I believe Franchon holds the WBC and the WBO, and I believe uh, um, Aline, she holds the WBA and the IBF. And for those of you that don't know who Aline Cedarus is, um, she was a super middleweight uh, female fighter, doesn't really have too much of a high scaling in her career. I mean, her only notable win was against, uh, Alicia, well, yeah, yeah, um, like, I, like, I don't know, like, what her full name is, but I, like, I want to say her name is Alicia Napoleon Espinoza, but her real name is just, um, Alicia, um, Napoleon, and I think the Espinoza is only there because she's married to somebody, so I'm not, I'm not too sure about, her full bio, but, um, yeah, she, uh, she was a decent fighter, she wasn't really anything special, uh, coming into boxing, um, she had her reign, she had decent wins over decent fighters, and, I mean, I could just take a look at that, and after this video, I, I gotta get out of here, because it's late for me, boy, but, um, yeah, let's just take a look at, uh, Alicia Napoleon, uh, she's not that bad of a fighter, but, I mean, she's 36 years old out of New York, and, uh, I believe she is orthodox, if I'm not mistaken, and damn, she is a short-ass lady, too, so, yeah, I mean, honestly, like, she's, like, you know, she's, uh, decent, to say the least, she's not, how should I say, like, the best fighter out there. Uh, she's only lost twice. Um, she's orthodox. She's out of Lindenhurst, New York. But her last fight, she lost to Aline Cedarus in a unification, um, against, uh, her, uh, for, for two belts. And, um, Alicia, she got knocked down, and unfortunately she lost in a very close unanimous decision which that kind of looks more like a five four five rounds to four or six rounds to four type of fight not too sure about those scorecards but i can probably see why she probably thought that fight wasn't really too realistic but then again <laughs> that's why for undisputed kind of really just shrugged everything off and then Knowing that this has been held up for like two years just makes zero sense of how Aline just hasn't really done anything ever since uh, the Napoleon fight. But at least for Franchon, she's been active, if I'm not mistaken. She only had like one fight against um, Ashley Curry. That was at a catch weight. Well, I think it was just for like, at, at like, you know, for, uh, you know, the heavyweight limit. But. Well, I, yeah, yeah, um, I think the heavyweight is 175 for female, but not too sure how that actually plays out, but, <laughs> yeah, uh, that was a decent, you know, move by her, at least she had her little activity, but I guess that's why she's been waiting for so long, and then after that, I've been hearing that she got out of Golden Boy, and she's now with Matchroom, so, you know, actually, like, I'm very proud of her, you know, like, I'm very proud of Franchon, because, you know, she is a very successful woman, despite, uh, you know, very little coverage that people give on her, but, 
Shout out to Franchon Cruz. I will be there at the fight watching the beautiful Big Mama Queen, uh, the heady, the heavy hitting diva out of the good old Baltimore, Maryland, USA, in which she's originally from Norfolk, Norfolk, Virginia. But yeah, uh, she's a good ass fighter. Uh, for those of you that don't know who she is, she is um, she was Clarissa Shields' very first opponent. Um, in the professionals, uh, when her and Clarissa first started off their careers, I believe they fought at 168, and unfortunately, Franchine, she wasn't prepared, and she unfortunately lost, but ever since then, uh, she went on a tear, and she just started blowing ladies out, and, uh, ever since then, well, actually, well, she won her first title in 2018 as of September, and then... Yeah, yeah, like, you know, for those that want to know who she beat, uh, she beat f former uh, world title challenger uh, Marciela Cornejo, in which I believe she hasn't even won a title, if I'm not mistaken. But, um, yeah, she was a decent lady. She she wasn't, she wasn't, you know, you know, there yet in getting a world title. And she's had you know, multiple opportunities where she has came up extremely short, but, um, yeah, like, I mean, she, like, you know, she did what she had to do, um, she unfortunately wasn't really able to, to actually get up there, but, um, she's a really, really good, credible, um, opponent, she, she, she definitely has done, uh, great things, you know, for the sport, and, um, um, I actually, like, um, I actually liked, uh, um, watching her fight, so, um, yeah, I mean, uh, Fran like, uh, Franchon had two great, amazing fights with her, and, uh, you know, uh, Cornejo is a, you know, very good certified fighter, um, uh, but yeah, uh, let's talk about all of her other opponents, um, she beat Cornejo twice, and obviously, for those of you that don't know, she had that cheating incident done by, uh, <laughs> Uh, by the uh, Mexican female fighter, in which, you know, many people don't really think she's a female. Uh, but that's a different conversation. Alejandra Jimenez, 12-0 uh, fighter, <laughs> called the La Tigre out of Mexico. <laughs> and funny enough that this lady has never returned back to the ring ever since she got caught with that BS. But, yeah, um... Good enough that Franchon, she managed to keep her belt because um, Jimenez did not arguably win that fight. Uh, people thought that Franchon had won that fight, including myself, too, because I thought, you know, that the fight was close, but I wasn't thinking, you know, Jimenez was going to really do much in that fight to actually win. So, you know, Franchon, she like, you know, she tried her best and she tried her hardest. And that's something that I can definitely um, respect out of her because she is a very um, strong, you know, hardworking woman. But um, yeah, Jimenez, she definitely brought Franchon out of her like out of her uh, comfort zone. Um, she was fighting a little bit dirty in that fight, so I mean, she she was trying to smother her weight on her and try to, you know, basically do some old school dirty tactics, but. Franchon, she pulled, she pulled through, and she, you know, she did what she had to do, and I was happy that the decision got overturned, because, uh, Franchon deserved to not lose that fight, she, uh, she deserved to win, and, uh, like, um, I, I personally think that, um, honestly, um, if, uh, Jimenez had won that fight, um, you know damn well that the WBC would have easily corrupted uh, Jimenez to try to cheat in, uh, the, like, you know, obviously for, um, Undisputed against, um, you know, um, Aline Cedarou, so I just don't see how the WBC thought that, you know, that was okay to try to screw over Franchon, knowing that, you know, she wouldn't speak up, and, you know, yet she did, so... I definitely credit Franchon and everything that was, uh, you know, like, uh, basically, um, legally, uh, mitigated to 
get the situation fixed because um if Franchon did not have any justice for this, uh this would be like basically similar to a Deontay Walder Tyson Fury situation. So um I'm very happy that Franchon she you know, she's doing well and uh I can't wait to see her come April thirtieth. So yep, like we got seventeen days away. But um yeah, I mean I don't understand why not a lot of people really talk about this, uh, you know, undisputed battle because, you know, for the Amanda Serrano, Katie Taylor fight card, there will be two undisputed, um, you know, like, uh, like two undisputed world champions, you know, f you know, being crowned or one will possibly win if Katie Taylor wins, she will keep her crown or if Amanda Serrano beats the living shit out of her. And she wins, and she wins over the entire crowd, along with Franchon Cruz. Then don't be surprised when America and Puerto Rico will be taking them belts home. But that's what I'm saying. This is a very good, memorable night for for women's boxing. But on top of that, this is this is by far the most you know the most historic night, especially on my birthday. Um, to be the most memorable night, you know, of the generation that we live for the sport of boxing in the, you know, in the, um, entire universe, so, um, yeah, like, I mean, Fran like, like, uh, Franchon Cruz, from a stylistic point, if you guys want to know more about her, um, I would view her more to be a boxer, uh, very pure boxer, um, people do say she can hit, and I think that is true, um, I don't think her power is as big uh, as people try to make it out to be, I mean, she is definitely a, uh, high level, um, volume style puncher. She could definitely hurt you when she has the opportunity to hurt you, but I think she chooses more to box, and if she wants to mix it up with you, she easily mixes it up with you, but in her past couple of fights, uh, excluding from the Jimenez fight, I think a lot of her style is more favor to the inside. And I mean, she doesn't have to utilize her outside boxing ability because she's able to use her uh, size and use her pressure to win the fights a lot more decisively. So I definitely give Franchon a lot of credit because she was, if I'm not mistaken, a high level amateur. In which I don't use like, the amateurs as the excuse of being good in the pros, but the you know the level of skill set that she's that she's been um, around, especially a lot of high level ladies like Clarissa, um, Christina Cruz, that is another pro, and Virginia Futch, um, in which I'm not really sold on her in her professional debut, even though she got a you know a nonsensical referee stoppage over her opponent but she's also another good high level fighter um who else i mean she's been around everybody um i think she's been around errol spence she's been around terence crawford gary russell um rashidi ellis big shot shaw um shakur stevenson um <laughs> unfortunately mikhail mayor <laughs> And which I don't like her because, you know, you know, like it's team like Alicia Baumgarten over here. And I'm pretty sure she, she's been around Alicia too. But yeah, um, you could easily tell that her level of skill set is, is, you know, is extremely high. Because, you know, but the people that she's been training with and just knowing out of like, the Baltimore area, even like guys like Calvin Ford and Gervonta Tank Davis, like, that's, you know, that speaks volume for what she has done in her career. And for her to win undisputed against um, Aline Cedarus, in which, you know, don't count out Aline. She she is a decent fighter, but she, but she doesn't hold the, you know, the intangible skills to actually give Franchon any problems. Unless she's, like, coming out there like Rocky and... She starts, like, banging big shots on Franchon, and then Franchon's not able to, like, possibly recover. And, um, you know, maybe she could try to knock her out, but uh, that's not going to happen because 
Uh, Franchon has, you know, um, like, like, how should I say? She has good defense. It's obviously, like, not the best defense. Like, I would rate her defense, like, a good 8.5 out of 10. It's good enough to keep, to keep all the hard shots away from you, but she is, you know, mild, mildly prone to get hit, you know, like, which is perfectly fine because it's like, she, you know, she still moves her head around, you know, in the fight itself, so she's not really there to get hit. She's actually there to slip a lot of punches. So, I mean, Aline, she, she, she is a decent fighter, to say the least. She, she fights very slow, and, um, her punches are very, very predictable from the jab, so I just think, um, Franchon's gonna do what she does best. She's gonna pick her apart, and she's gonna hit her with some really, really hard shots, and, uh, I think eventually uh, she'll probably end up stopping her or just basically just beating her to the punch where it's going to be like a cruised, uh, cruised uh, um, decision win. Just just simply due to the fact that um, Fra Franchon holds a lot more skills in her um, expenditure and she has the um, athletic ability um, despite her being old you know, herself. Because I believe uh, Aline, she's 36, and Franchon, if I'm not mistaken, I think she's 34? But then again, it doesn't matter because it's going to be a good high-level fight. <laughs> but I think Franchon, just by how how she's been performing lately, um, even though she's been out the ring for well over a year, um, I think that she should definitely beat you know, um, Aline pretty, uh, uh, um, pretty well, uh, Aline doesn't really possess enough tools in the toolbox to actually handle the adjustments made by Franchon, and I think Franchon, you know, she's gonna end up being successful in the fight, and I think, um, you know, um, um, Aline, she's just gonna have, like, a hard time getting her shots off, because, you know, even though, if I'm not mistaken, I think Aline has a height and reach advantage over her, but, you know, like, with her punches being so, uh, how should I say, so slow and predictable, um, I don't, like, like, I personally don't see Franchon losing the fight, because Franchon's gonna look at those deficiencies, and she's gonna basically make those adjustments already to already have a stylistic advantage over her so i don't know i i think i like you know i think franchon should definitely get you know get the job done and uh yeah we can definitely see a very first ever female undisputed world champion so um especially in the four bell era so yeah let's go um be sure to let me know what you guys think. Do you think Franchon Cruz and um, Aline Cedarus is a good fight to watch? And if so, um, what are you looking forward to seeing out of this fight? Um, I I will be at the fight, so um, if you guys want to you know support me on my birthday, I will drop you know the, the cash app or whatever you know donations you know do donation services that you know like y'all want to you know come by for so. I'll definitely do that, and, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later. All right, peace out. Bye.